Yeah, Smart War Games here. Let's check out Action Stations. That is quite an old game. Yeah, it is 30 years old. A naval warfare simulation. And if you care for graphics, look elsewhere. Because this game is definitely not about graphics. But I was wondering... I checked, uh, made a YouTube search and found not a single video about this game. As it is still quite unique, yeah, quite a deep naval warfare simulation. And there are not many of them. So, I was thinking let's showcase it and do a review. I'm already digged into this sim a bit and was quite impressed by its depth. Sure, there are some similar games around like JTS naval battles, but when it comes to the death, you know, when it comes to penetration tables, everything, this game is some sort of a equivalent to Tigers on a Prowl, to tactical sim for World War II ground warfare, and. Yeah, perhaps when we get CMO World War II expansion, I heard that there is something in the planning. We might finally get something really good. I mean, there are other games like, but it's not really World War II, Shutland, that is World War I. And this new release, War on the Sea. We also have, of course, Fighting Steel, still to this very day a unique game, especially with the campaign expansion, Thunder at Sea. Also, still. One of the best choices if you look for naval games is there are not that many around for is a naval warfare sims. There are not m too many made of them. Yeah, we'll showcase it to you and talk about it. It's often described as a quite complex game, true. Perhaps I already have quite experienced with many of those games. I think it is rather very accessible. And I will start with a rather big battle, Zama, which was uh, one of the center actions of one of the biggest naval battles in World War II in the Pacific, the Battle of the Leyte Gulf. But we will then commence with a playthrough of Norway. Uh, it is also simulating Atlantic warfare and everything. And yeah, this game was developed. I did some research, it was developed by uh, XO of a cruiser. And those guys put a lot of research into it. And in the 90s, this meant something, and there was no internet around or whatever you really had to put effort into in order to do some historical, authentic sims. So let's start this. Let's keep everything. We play against computer. We will assume. Good question. Let's do red. And change the skill level of the computer. We will keep everything on standard. And yeah, it reminds me a lot of Tigers in the Pro 2, this genius programming. Uh, you have a lot of options, you have a lot of depth, but you can also leave a lot of the stuff to the AI. And I have the manual here. Show it you. It's quite a nice read. Uh, Can you immediately tell that this is going for something serious? Yep. Definitely some research was made. A 
filtration tables that also went into the game. Good. <clears throat> Let's return to the game. Yeah, you are usually... It is a, some sort of a Vigo game. You usually issue orders. And then a turn is resolved. You can also resolve multiple turns. And you start with this overview screen, which... Yeah, we are playing the US Blue Force. And... Yeah, I, there is one major screen that is a battle plot. Let's focus on the Iowa battleship. Set of 50 kilo yards scale. Yeah, graphics are quite simple. That is no surprise. Yeah, this game is 30 years old. That is our task force heading here. There is something in the rear. The numbers are re reflect the ships. And it seems like we are heading and on our starboard side an enemy task force is presenting itself. We will go into that later. We'll first give you you have detailed reports, currently there is nothing, this will come up. Yeah, ship status, we are riding currently a fleet consisting of twenty six ships. I guess we are escort for amphibious for amphibious group. And you can select every ship. And find out the status about it a lot of information so i myself also like if you present with information even if you don't need it uh, recommending is also about you get a lot of information but you need to fill that out but i like that because it shows you it, it immerses you into the game and yeah, the detail that is going on for example here for every ship you can press f9 and get a detailed damage report yeah, splinter hits fire control center hits magazine hits whatever Uh, directors are simulated. Only those guys do nothing. But we will change that. And then you have range penetration. You can check every. Uh, this will come into play when we are in contact. Movement. You can. You don't need to command every single ship. You can keep formations and also modify those formations. Uh, that is quite convenient. Can add other ships to the formation can decide if you want to turn together or in sequence and issue the entire an order to an entire formation which is usually something like here it might be a battle line this might be an escort line but you can also issue orders to single ships you will get screens sure it looks dos style but i played many of those games and i didn't grow up with this game i didn't play this game I have no rose tinted glasses. It is a retrospective review of somebody that played this, start to discover this game a year ago. But I can, I can see if a game has a really good design and a lot of love put into it. As same here, you can change course for every single chip and or change speed if required. Gun director, uh, that is an important thing. You can simply go automatic. Which you might do, uh, open fire on automatic, but you can also go manual of every single ship. Let's select again the Iowa. And give director orders, uh, 12 directors uh, at your disposal. Select director 2. Uh, track fire, you can fire illumination rounds that is also simulated in this game, firing off star shells and illumination as naval warfare in world war ii also was conducted at low light conditions can select every single mount and you can assign groups uh, you can group together guns 
to directors, but we will keep it on automatic. As I mentioned, it's similar to Tigers in the Pro. You can micromatch everything, but you don't need to. And it is really good design, even by nowadays, nowadays standards. Then you have control. Aircraft is also simulated. You can fire torpedoes. You can use a TFC, torpedo fire control computer. Uh, you can also do auto launch, which if ships would be in range, you could use auto launch if you don't want to hassle too much, but you can go deep and design even your own torpedo spreads. You can use aircraft. As far as I know, this game rather focuses on surface engagements because those major carrier battles are rather not, at least not what from what I saw in the mission list, are not represented. I guess that has a good reason because carrier warfare and surface warfare are two different pairs of shoes. Yeah? And it is not easy to, it is rather challenging to get both simulated, especially carrier warfare is an entire different thing from surface warfare. If you want to go full authentic, and I guess those developers aimed for full authenticity and perhaps they excluded some battles like Coral Sea or Midway, because those battles were solely focused on carrier warfare, which is entirely different from surface naval warfare. You can even initiate counter flooding, flood magazines if one of your ships is in danger. We will see if this happens. Initiate smoke screens, activate searchlights, fire star shells, launch aircraft. Yeah, many ships are equipped with scout aircraft. In this case, we have no ships that have some, but sometimes they have. And the controls are rather, I mean, a lot of those older games struggle with cumbersome controls. But I must say, in this one, it is not the case. Uh, similar to Tiger Center Pro, even by modern standard, it has nice controls. And I think it's a unique game. You will have hard time to find an alternative. Uh, sure, there is. Um, there is, for World War II, there is... John Tiller's Guadal Canal, John Tiller's Midway, nice games, I played them. Yeah, War in the Sea, I hope it will evolve a bit, uh, it's also an option. And yeah, as I mentioned, um, of course, Fighting Steel, but Fighting Steel is rather focusing on smaller ship engagements. I mean, with, uh, with, the expand with the campaign expansion, I'm also playing a beautiful game, also still one of the pole positions in naval warfare. But if you really want to go for this commanding an entire task force of ships, uh, there's not too many around, too many options for naval war gamers. Yeah, and as I mentioned, this is working with turns. I mean, let's check again the battle plot quickly. Let's focus it on the eye over. Give 50 kilo yards. Okay. We will issue automatic targeting and firing. Searchlight is not needed because it is daylight. Status report. We don't need to check. Everybody should be fine. And yeah, it can help if you're running dust box. It can help with control F12 to speed it up a bit in the cycles up to 10,000, for example. Then, as back in the days, they had, of course, hardware limitations. And then you can also do the interface faster. Yeah, and we have in the rear a second task force heading the same direction, I guess, that is uh, the, also including the amphibious ships. We are escorting an amphibious landing force while getting intercepted by a huge enemy task force on our starboard flank. But we are in a good fire position so far. Let's see, is there anything else to do? Torpedoes? No. So like that this game is showing you the hotkeys in the upper screen. No. So let's do... Right, gun director is auto on automatic, open fire. And then we will multiply turns. Let's do maximum 20 turns and stop on firing. 
Uh, the game will then auto resolve the turns until we get into a. Uh, once shots are fired, the game will auto pause. That is really remembering me uh, of tigers on the pro or panthers in the shadows. Yeah, those games games were quite revolutionary back then. Uh, especially this one. It is from the 90s. Yeah, it was released in, in the 90s. I guess many that watch right now were not even alive in the 90s. Not born. And it is impressive. Yeah? And perhaps we will do some playthroughs. As I will do one with the Bismarck. Because um, I first also need to learn the ropes. Now the game is calculating the turns automatic, 19 turns left. If we happen to fire, the game will stop. I think that's always great game design if you have a game that allows you to micromanage the heck out, but you can ask command from a from a yeah from top down yeah. Okay, that's what happened. Give me a detailed report. No, the game stopped. Could be that we were fired upon, but um, because of fuck of all, we don't know though don't know it. We'll issue another multiple turns run. This, what I like about this is you don't need to press too much stuff. Yeah? You also don't need to use a mouse. It can be sometimes also rather convenient. The game has mouse support, but you don't need to use it usually. Okay, let's quickly check what is going on here. That is 8, 12. What would be of course greater is quickly to identify what are those ships. But you can, I guess, tell by the size of the circle. That one or two, for example, are battleships, three, four, five are cruisers, and those smaller circles might be escorts. Again, pause again, but they are definitely an interception course, which you can tell by the vector line. So let's see. Ah, okay. Yeah. Ship 8 is being fired upon by the enemy. By ship 88, ship ID 59 and 95. Yeah, at ship 8, no hits scored. Good. Let's quickly check ship 8. Ship 8 is the Miller. Check the... The Miller. No, oh, wait. Here is at 7. Ship 8 it was, right? Sullivan's. That is a destroyer. Uh, what should we expect it? A screening destroyer. Oh. A Fletcher class destroyer. Currently running 28 nuts of 35 maximum. It's equipped with four damage control teams, engine power 100%, zero aircraft equipped, two directors. Could fire torpedoes. Yeah, but I don't know if they have range. Yeah, gun range back in the days was bigger than torpedo range. Nah, no, seems like they're out of reach. Uh, forget it. Uh, wait, is it? Is it possible? Okay, we already did the fire, uh, or perhaps not, I don't know. But um, from the distance scale, I can tell that this is not happening. Let's go 25 kill yards. But I see some symbols. Could be, yeah, we fire torpedoes, even if it's not really that helpful by, on this distance. But it might scare them off once they notice it. 
But it's fine, yeah. I might pull off the destroyer 8 into formation 7. Let's see if I can manage that formation. Ship 8 is consisting of formation 3. I could put ship 8 into the formation of ship 7. 7 is pro. And they are all. Okay, they are already in the formation. Perhaps by a line ahead. Initialize formation. Yeah, you can do a lot of stuff. Um, I need to figure it out myself, but we will play a rather easy scenario. It is recommended that you start out with some. some um, scenarios that have less ships. Uh, this here is of course running a task force of 50 ships or whatever is of course more challenging. But let's simply see how combat resolves. It's two turns. Shouldn't start with one of the biggest naval battles. Yeah, we fire torpedoes indeed. Yeah, we will um, turn ship 8 because they are focusing on it. This destroyer will last not long. And we received two hits on the Fletcher class destroyer and now you can check out the ship status of it. And you will see it is blinking two hits, then you can go into damage, into detailed damage report. And two hits were scored into engineering yeah? and that is nice detail. Yeah? There's not many games that give you such detail. That is, I know there are others that, like me, like data. Others might be over over text with too much data presented. They are not not that good at filtering out. Sure, it's fine. But if you like this, if you have read its stuff, but you don't need to dive into it. Yeah, like in com in CMO or like in Tigers on the Prowl. Good. Um, we will issue a movement order to the Fletcher class, uh, to the Sullivan, Su Sullivan's. Course 180. Disengage. Turn port. Yeah, Selwyn is turning. And... oh. <clears throat> Punched my microphone. Now we... okay. Battle is commencing. Ship 12, 3, 8, 5. But we are still fired upon by the enemy. No hit scored. Now we are firing back. Yellow lines are orb lines. Red is the enemy lines. They're still focusing on the Fletcher and firing also on ship 7. Our battleships open fire on 585. 5 and 85. And V scored hit on ship 95. It also indicates you the size of the battle. Because the IDs are handed out from one up. This might be a battle with over 100 ships. And that is something you don't see often. Uh, even Viking Steel has a limitation of ships. I mean, the, as I mentioned, the expansion is expanding it. I think the only game that might really lim simulate really full-scale World, World War II naval warfare, surface warfare, is yeah, John Tillers. And sure, there are some DOS games, but there are not many like this one here. 
And we scored a hit on ship 88, a ship on ship 59. Ship 5 got hit by medium caliber guns. Okay, let's see detailed reports. Oh, there's more coming up. That's fine. The Yamato is here. And here you can do, for example, a penetra range penetration check. Uh, Iowa on the Yamato. And you see here, main battery, highest belt armor penetration range, 19,000 yards. Lower stack armor penetration range, 37,000 yards. Secondary batteries, no armor, armor penetration possible, which makes sense because secondary batteries are not really designed to fight superior capital ships. They are designed to fight uh, rather stuff that is closing in. And it might be under command of a, another fire director and might fight cruisers or escorts. And this is data. Uh, this is program something like this. That requires skill. Do a program and get all this stuff into it. That it works out in an authentic fashion. And from what I've read, or from what I've researched, they really also kept developing this game. I'm running the latest version. There were even expansion packs for this game, which I also have installed. I guess many of those battles come from them. And there's also a construction set in the main folder you install it, you have, you know, you need to go with your DOS box into this folder to mount the folder and then you have here generate. There is a random fleet battle generator where you can do whatever you want. There's database generators, database editors. I don't know if there's still somewhere a database to be found because I can imagine that this game spawned a lot of scenarios. If somebody knows, Unfortunately, a lot of the stuff got lost. There are some people that try to conserve it. As I can imagine that with that tools provided, a lot of custom content was made. But there's a lot of editors in this game. Good, we are in a gunfight. Let's simply turn and see what happens. But we are fighting the Yamato. But I don't want to play this battle. Uh, it is very engaging. Okay, we fight the ship, but ship, uh, ship 5 eight, and 85. And getting engaged by the Japanese forces. Especially our escorts. But they are also starting to fire on our cruisers. 3, 4 and 8. Uh, our battleships. I currently not attended. Ship 12 received 5 hits. We need to check out Ship 12. The Langcock. No. Perhaps I misread the number. Ah, ship 12 scored hit 5 hits on 59, yeah, not bad. Ship 5, ship 4 and 5 received 1 hits. Ship 3. Good, but that is enough, yeah, that is really a huge engagement which we might indeed play one day. Because I think the game is still quite engaging. And you see you can play it quite, quite convenient. I'm not micromanaging the heck out of every single ship. Sure, I might check the battle plot in order to maneuver. Currently, I think it is fine. Yeah, there's simply not much to attend. You could, of course, maneuver the second task force coming from the rear in order for perhaps to form a kill box. And, but you can go here, gun director, yeah, manual. So let's pick the Eova battleship. And if you want to micromanage it, if you really want to dive into naval gunnery, you can do that. You can give... Here, yeah, we have 12 directors, got that. 
And open fire. Uh, firing is already in progress. Okay, yeah. Makes sense. And then you can select all targets with the IDs that you have around. Sure. You need to memorize some of those numbers, but why I also like why I like sometimes those games is because and it comes true to recommending. Uh, perhaps nowadays they have millions of screens on their ships, I don't know, I never was in the navy, I was in the army. But recommending is also you need to use the brain, you need to memorize data, recall it quickly. And I I consider this game somewhat it is not true because you have a really nice battle plot here. I mean you could play this game without this battle plot. But I was first thinking there is nothing, no graphical representation, but you have. You could also play this game without this battle plot, and then it would be basically a pen and paper war game, uh, where you need to, everything to do in your head, which can be sometimes beneficial, as in reality you might also need to crunch data, crunch the situation in your head. But here it is not required, yeah? you can hit the battle plot and even command from this battle plot by issuing fire, for example here the Eova, let's give director, director orders, director 1, track and fire on the battleship, it is assigned, uh, you can also check penetration tables from here, so you can play from this screen while you have a lot of information here, you can access information of the ships, Eova received no hits so far. What is this? Uh, New Jersey. Oh. Those guys received one hit. Let's hit damage control. They lost a t secondary tertiary mount. Uh, tertiary mount that is small scale caliber stuff. Got blown up by the hits. The, the searchlights are deactivated. Makes sense in daylight. There's a cruiser of the Cleveland class. No torpedoes. Could fire more torpedoes. Ship 8 already fired. Ship 7. Torpedoes is F9. Auto launch from the Miller on the closest battleship. I guess it is. Ah, okay, it's maximum beyond range. Okay. I guess this is sorted by, because it is not sorted by numbers, so I could imagine it is sorted by distance. That would make sense, that you sort this by distance. Good, 7 is not in range. Give me a closer battle plot. Give me 10. Ship 12 might fire torpedoes. If it is equipped with that, it seems to be an escort class, so it might carry torpedoes. Auto launch, because. But we can also tr let's try out a manual launch. What was it, ship 12? Because I don't know how. Yeah, we have torpedoes. Arc of fire is. It's swivels. Let's activate mount 1, fire 5 torpedoes. Ah, I need to enter torpedo course, Shimi, yeah, wait, no, let's, okay, that is some super manual mode, what is the TFC computer? That was ship 12, the Langcock, right? Okay, they're already calculating it out. Yeah, do it. Maximum range, high. Look at this, that is beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maximum highest speed is coming with a range of 6 nautical miles, I guess. Yeah, uh, I don't know, 6 nautical miles, that is sweet. That is too much. Fire low speed. Yes, launch them. Launch second mount as well, five torpedoes. No, use the TFC computer. Ah, it's okay, fine. We, I, I would rather use auto launch simply. Okay. 
but enough of that. Yeah, I want to play now a smaller scenario in order if perhaps you are interested in naval warfare, but absolutely struggle to understand what I'm doing here. And let me quickly shift. to an entire different AO uh, here that you might want to see and uh, you are presented with a nice screen. Good. Ship ID 52 will turn port. Uh, they're already engaging us. Heavy caliber guns, so it might be a heavy ship. Give me the battle rope plot. That costs 300. Lost contact of the ship. We will hunt it down. It was somewhere at 270. Speed up. 25. Maximum information speed is 13. Okay, we regain contact. Somewhere 200. We're getting engaged from other directions. Mm, seems to be radar fire. Go automatic, open fire, and go 300. At 200. Port. I lost contact. Regained. Yeah, radar technology by the Allies was usually better. Damn it. Ship 2 received 2 hits. That is Ignizer now. Give me a detailed damage report. One hull hit, one, one main battery destroyed. Third main battery destroyed. We are also engaging. Scored 10 hits on 91. Plus four additional hits. Uh, 91 is firing a secondary battery, hitting us with 12 hits. That is close combat. Search lights destroyed. Radar destroyed. That is bad. One fire director destroyed. Damage info. Something is important. What is going on? We have a major fire going on. Turn 180. Port. What the? Is this? 
that it should blow up. Ship 91 capsizes. Explosion, four major explosions on 91. I guess we hit a main battery. Ship 91 blew up. But we need to slow down our formation because we have also a major fire going on. Slow down to 15 in order to help with damage, damage control. And head direction 270. Starboard. What the is this? I'm getting so radar fired. One hit was scored by a like caliber. We need to hunt him down. Let's see. Who is facing that those guys manage manage the fire? Yeah, fire seems to be under control. Yeah, fire is under control. Then speed up. The 20 knots. Whoa, 20 hits, but like caliber, that is not really a concern for us. Got 13 hits. Oh, what? Ship Zero. Ship Zero is not our ship. No bridge control. What's going on? It's a Gneiser now. Let's check out damage control. We have a fire on a bow. I think we are in a trap here that doesn't look too good. Change course to 270. One impact on ship 51 or 14 even. This thing might go boom with main battery hits, heavy cal hits. But they are scored some main battery hits on us. British force request to capitulate <laughs> on the sea. Jimmy's nobody is capitulating here. No, no quarter is given, but seems like we're doing good. Let's keep firing at them. Firing still long range, got them radar. Need to add zero. Uh, starboard. Whoa, why did we change formation leader? Did we load? We have 
have a serious problem here. First and second control destroyed. Control at local station, yeah. This is some detail. Even C2 about a ship is simulated. By MDCL. I don't know what MDCL means, but I guess it's not good. Uh, it's major fire. Okay, Gneiser now detach. And can I now change speed? Ah, oh, this thing is already running slow. Maybe because of maneuver. Let's change down to 10 in order to assist with damage control. Scharnhorst, push on them. Yeah, you see, you need to play it really cautious. I mean, I'm rather playing it recklessly. Getting fired upon by radar contacts. And there is radar guided artillery fire. And we already lost our radar on one of our capitals. We are currently not fighting back. You really need to watch for your maneuvers. That is not some game you replay fast pace and blow up stuff. Even in those, in those smaller scenarios. Because currently we're getting... Your fleet is shattered. British demand your capitulation. <laughs> ah, okay, now the British changed their mind. Interesting. Let's check the ship status. Uh, that doesn't look good, a lot of red indicators. Yeah, major fire. Let's quickly check the battle screen. Yeah, those guys are out of range. I mean, they are in range of the main battery, but I guess we lost already. We are not really combat capable. I even have no clue what we forked there. But it seems like we forked battleships, because they are firing heavy calibers at us. Look at this. All fire directors destroyed. All main batteries destroyed. This ship is mission killed. This ship has also lost most of its directors. And has a major fire on board, which is not really helpful. I see you really need to play it cautiously and Maneuver like in real naval warfare, yeah? can't simply push into an enemy formation because you might receive a hail of fire and then struggle. Yeah, that is not looking good. Yeah, okay. That is not looking good. Good. Um, but it gives you an overview of this game. Very interesting. I mean, perhaps I want to check out more. Ah, okay. So there were battleships on the scene. And we are basically, yeah, because we kept, we lost basically two battleships. The enemy lost one battleship, one destroyer, two naval confrontation between Japan and US, which was a possibility. Even a game de developed on the war in the Pacific engine that is also quite good. I have it on my channel. Focusing on this, this, this 
fictional confrontation before World War II. It's quite interesting. Of course, naval warfare technology was very different then, as area uh, carrier technology was still in the early days. And the battleship was still the king of the sea. So that's not only World War II. I even heard that this is, there is even World War I engagements. Let's see what do we have for ships? Georgia, I don't know, can't tell. But the scenario is called 32. Yeah, aircraft you can't launch. <laughs> launch fail, jettisoning. Even this is simulated. Of the weather is problematic. Try it again. So we lost the aircraft. Yeah, we lost the aircraft from Georgia. Obviously, we're running too fast. Simply, sometimes those aircraft failed. Launching from those catapults. Okay, this time it worked out. He launched the aqua from the Virginia. Reconnaissance. Launch the aqua from Saratoga. And then you can give orders to the aircraft as well. Not easy, but you will figure it out. Yeah, nice training. Navigation training. But yeah, I think this should give you a good overview. I don't want to make the video too long. We might do a playthrough. But a really interesting game. And yeah, I'm really surprised that this was never streamed on YouTube. Sure, I mean, it's... Nowadays, only applying to a selected audience, but I mean, this game was very really popular back then. It was very really beloved, especially among among war gamers that have that like that like naval warfare. And I can I can also immediately tell why uh, because the game design at uh, thirty years old. Uh, keep this in mind. Impressive. Okay. Good. That was Action Stations. Check it out. And if, as I mentioned, if you know where we might find those custom scenarios or whatever, have somebody conserve them, let me know. See you in the next episode, good hunting.